everybody, and welcome to Taking Control, the ADHD podcast on True Story FM. I'm Pete Wright, and I'm here with Nikki Kinzer. Hello, Nikki. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. Oh, Nikki. Uh, I don't want to say anything about our guest just yet. We have some pro forma stuff to get through, but I want to tell you this right up front. I'm an only child, but if I were to ever have a sister in this world, (laughs) it would be our guest today. I feel such a kinship to this individual. I cannot wait for this show. I want to pre-apologize to our listeners. I don't know what's going to come of it. I have bullets, but the pre-show has been about 30 minutes of just kind of stream of consciousness uh, technology talk. I have no idea what you're talking about. Smile and nod. Smile and nod. It's going to (laughs) be great. And there is risk. There'll be monsters here. Anyway, before we dig in, I want you to head over to Take Control ADHD and get to know us a little bit better. You can listen to the show right there on the website or subscribe to the mailing list and we will send you an email each time a new episode is released. Connect with us on Twitter or Facebook at Take Control ADHD. And if this show has ever touched you, please, we invite you to support us over at Patreon dot com slash the ADHD podcast. Uh, Patreon gives us listener supported podcasting. Uh, a, a few bucks a month from you goes to us and it helps us invest more time and attention in the show, in resources for the show, in the time that it takes to uh, bring on great guests and uh, continue to uh, invest in our resources. We have a new resource that should be launching this very week. Uh, it is a new, uh, I, I think, the ADHD podcast resource library. We've cooked it up in Coda, and you can go get it. And you can, if there's ever anything that you've heard us talk about on this show and said, hey, I need to know more about that piece of software or that podcast or that journal article, you can search for it right in the resource library. And uh, it, we're keeping it updated. And that is all thanks to patrons uh, who are supporting this show. So thank you very, very much for your support. Welcome to all of our wonderful new members. Okay, here we go. Brittany Smith is an ADHD productivity and technology coach here in lovely Oregon. She has a master's of science degree in cognitive neuroscience and uses latest tools to help her clients get more done with less stress. Oh, Brittany Smith, welcome to the ADHD podcast. (laughs) Thanks so much for having me. I'm excited. Welcome, welcome. I need to open with apologies and a great shame. You wrote me when we did the ADHD summit. We did this presentation, Nikki Mm -hmm. and I, and you wrote me that day. We did. And I immediately wrote Nikki and I said, Brittany Smith, have we talked about Brittany Smith? And Nikki said, yeah, she's awesome. She's fantastic. (laughs) And she's going to be, we're going to try and have her on the show. And I thought in my head, amazing, Brittany will be on the show and we could, and then I should just let her know. And in my head, I totally let Brittany know. And I said, you're great. Thank you so (laughs) much. (laughs) And then my head stopped all activity and didn't actually (laughs) write you back. So I have this email that's sitting here that I found today, and it is a a non-response to Brittany Smith. That is my great shame because uh, you deserved a response. So there it is publicly. No shame. It was a busy, busy time. It was a busy time. It sure was. It was a very busy time. I just figured I'd throw it out there, say hi, and, and whatever. Yeah. Well, 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 I got to say, when I first met Brittany, she saved me. <laughs> <laughs> and, you, and you may not know this or not, but you did. So I'm going to be real transparent here. So it was what, two, it was before or pre-COVID. So it would have been 2019 mm-hmm. at the chat conference. Yeah. So I had gone out to dinner with um, some fellow coaches and some, well, I knew one of them. And I didn't know the rest of the table. And let's just say I had more than one glass of wine, you know, because that just happens sometimes when you're at these conferences. And we're walking back and uh, one of the the gal that I knew said, oh, well, we're going to go up to this. um, It was like a retirement party thing, you know, up at this person's room. Well, the girl that I knew left. So I'm going up the elevator with people I don't know, going into this room that I have no idea who who's retiring, although I did figure it out when I went in. And uh, and I don't know anybody. I'm just standing here and I, I'm thinking, oh my God, how do I like, how do I exit out so that nobody sees me? <laughs> 
I knew that I had come in and left. And thank God, Brittany recognized me and she came right up with her nice bubbly smile and said, I know who you are. <laughs> and uh, we had met and, and talked a lot that evening. And um, oh, I do. I am so thankful for that because seriously, it would have been probably one of the most embarrassing moments of my life because I, you know, I was just like, nobody ah, would have noticed I was I there. Nobody but me would have noticed. <laughs> <laughs> they were all doing their own thing. No, we had a great they talk. Really were. Yeah, yeah, we, we did. talked we did. about a and lot of programs and um, mm-hmm. yeah, we, we talked about cool coaching things. And that's things. when we talked about you. Yeah. And you getting on this show, it's only taken two hours or two years to do that. Three years. So I yeah. apologize for that. No, we're I a year and a half. Shame there too. Year and a yeah. half. That's true. COVID. We yeah. like to take our time. Yeah, you're right. Take our time around <laughs> yeah. here. The old ADHD yeah. podcast. I So I, I have been uh, listening to your stuff uh, all, all morning. I just finished your uh, episode that you did with David Sparks and, and Mike over the oh. Focused uh, show, which is a great show. Uh, and uh, so it's got me thinking about all kinds of things. And the first thing I want to talk about, what we hear a lot is uh, when people struggle with their technology, uh, they, uh, they struggle... In, in many ways, because I think they are afraid of it, it Often. right? That they, they haven't gotten to the point where they're, where they have an affinity with it beyond fear and uncertainty and doubt. The alarms are going to fail. The technology can't be trusted. Like something is, gives me reason to fear it. And I would love to, to get your thoughts a little bit on how to cross that chasm from fear to love. How do you fall in love with the tools that are here ostensibly to support you? I don't know that everyone will fall in love. Now, I do see two things. I also see the, and I have ADHD and I tried all the tech at the same time, which is also a problem. (laughs) Yeah. Don't know anything about that. (laughs) Right? Um, (laughs) But but yeah, it it really is. You always start with, what do you want out of it? What do you want out of this device? Why did you buy it? Mm -hmm. What, What is it supposed to do? And, you know, you probably spent a not insignificant amount of money on whatever device you're talking about. Why? What's it there for? You start from there and, and then figure mm-hmm. out, is it, is it doing that? Or is it just becoming a time suck, for example? Mm-hmm. Or is it becoming a source of stress that you don't want to look at? Well, and I think I, I think so much of it is it comes back to like the curse of choice, right? That there are mm-hmm. so many options to do the same thing that figuring out like, I, and I think this is the ADHD challenge, right? Is that these are just dopamine distribution devices, right? <laughs> like at some point, you're going to be happy with something, but then you won't be happy and you'll need to find happy again. And so you just keep <laughs> finding these choices. And eventually, as they fail you, it can be like this progressive, this like cascading failure, uh, sensation that like there is no hope like if it didn't work that way as it worked Mm -hmm. in the commercial then clearly there's something wrong with me or it whatever the case i have i have been failed by it or i have failed it and that leads to that sensation of just loss and shame and like hopelessness yeah i've got an app full of things i feel bad i haven't opened or Mm -hmm. screens of apps Mm -hmm. that i feel bad i haven't opened yeah. yeah, and not just saying, you know what? Maybe it's not me. Maybe it's the app. Or right. So, so when in, you, in terms so, of certain things, it really yeah, depends on which which scenario. Like, but you know, if somebody's not sure where to start, I always yeah. suggest the simplest thing you can get away with. And and for some people, you know, I've had somebody hire me for this elaborate task management system, and you know, like a good coach, the first thing I said is, "What's worked for you before?" And it was a notebook. And yeah. after a little bit, he was so happy with his notebook. <laughs> <laughs> Does, doesn't doesn't take Isn't long. Isn't that true? Yeah. And he never yeah. needed to the, move the, past the, that. Yeah. And then yeah. some people right, do, right. and it it just really depends a lot on what you actually need and and what works for your mm-hmm. style. So I want to hear your style mm-hmm. though. What is it for you when you download something new? And uh, like, what is it? How do you break a new technology into your life? It's hard to hit that barrier these days because I've tried a lot of things and found some things that work. I don't give it very long at all. Okay. But I've been around the bend a few times. Yeah. And and I've learned exactly what I like and what I don't like. If it's somebody else, right? They're saying like, I don't know what to use for blank. And I'm going to say, what's the simplest thing? You know, I I really need a task list and I need it to alert. Okay, can you use the Google Tasks? Can you use Apple Reminders? Because if you can start there... Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Like, just start there. Because you don't know what, what complexity you need until you've been using it, until you have a habit around it. You really can't mm-hmm. know. Right. If it's really struggling to build the habit, then we figure out why. You know, if you notice you don't want to open it because you don't like the look of it, don't use that app. If you hate how it looks, mm-hmm. why are you going to stick to it? You're probably not yeah. going to. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know? I'm a, I'm a super tactile, like, experience based user like I develop uh-huh. an emotional like relationship with beauty oh, yeah. in the apps that I use and yeah. it's why I struggled for so long with Todoist mm-hmm. because it's not a beautiful thing like it's not an artifact uh, <laughs> and, and it's why I wish that the apps like things were did everything that I needed them to do uh, because it doesn't and I've been around long enough to know that I need more than it offers and I, I just wish I wish I wish it solved those because it's beautiful I I love touching it. I love like with my eyeballs. I love touching things with my eyeballs. <laughs> There's got to be a word for that. <laughs> Man. Oh, well, that'll be for future Pete. Uh, I love I love like the feel of certain gear. It's why I'm an Apple guy, because I love the way brushed aluminum feels to my fingertips. I love the the edges. I love like I love that experience. It it in my head, it feels like it makes me faster. I know that it's that's placebo, but I'm fine with that. It's okay. Um and uh, so usually it's the more beautiful an app is, the harder it is for me to get to that point and say, okay, you're not really helping me anymore. Like I'm just spinning my wheels. I'm fighting you because you're gorgeous. You're just, you app are you, super You can hot. be beautiful and, and not, and not cut it. You said a word. <laughs> That's right. That if we're going to talk a little bit about task management, just yeah. gloss over it. You said the word artifact. And oh, I thought yeah, that was... Okay. A beautiful word. I feel like there's a tendency as people with ADHD to create this beautiful, perfect mausoleum of our task management that will just mm-hmm. sit there in perpetuity and be exactly what we need and be perfect and beautiful. And that is not what task management is. It's messy and it changes mm-hmm. rapidly. And yes. and the metaphor that I found myself... Uh, Hmm. reminding myself of when I want to create a mausoleum again is that, or or an artifact, I like that, is it's more like taking care of a pet. You have to feed mm. and water them every day, turns out. You have, to, yes. you have to pet them and let them know that they're a good dog. <laughs> you know, and, and you guys talked about that recently in an episode on... on a, I don't remember the phrasing. It was something about planning it was your probably week. week planning. Yeah. yeah. yeah weekly planning. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. That it really, it needs that, that interaction on a regular basis. And, yeah. and it can't just be this like, I'm going to hang you on my wall, you beautiful piece of task management art. Right. Right. Yeah. Well, and I have a question, uh, Brittany, about that with building habits, because mm-hmm. that is, that is so hard. Right. Because I, I will help a client with that, you know, task manager system. And it it's so hard sometimes to get into that habit of checking it every day mm-hmm. and petting it and feeding it <laughs> and watering it. And and I love that. I'm probably going to start using that. And you, anybody that's listened to the Britney show, you need to know that this is what I'm referring to. Uh, <laughs> but I love that because it's so true. So what are some ways that you do or what what do you do to help clients get into that? That, to that habit? Um, well, one, if I'm noticing the, I'm jumping from which app I'm using like every week and mm-hmm. never getting any stability, I'll just say, I don't care what one you pick, but I'm going to ask you how it's going for the next three, four weeks. Let's just pick one right now. And I like mm-hmm. make them pick it because decision fatigue is the worst for us. Like, no, 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 you don't have to make this yeah. decision on your own. Like, let's do it together. And then I'm going to ask you how it's going. Okay, so when are you going to look at the task management? You know, when are you going to look at your list? And, and really try to help them paint the verbal picture as much as possible mm-hmm. so that, that. It, it actually has at least a chance of happening, right? Like, okay, I've thought right, through this. Right. When might it happen? Okay, what can, you know, mm-hmm. those all those normal things of what can get in the way, that kind of stuff. Um, mm-hmm. And really make sure that I can see the picture they're painting. And if I get like... Mm-hmm. My ambiguity sense is tingling. Then, then that's when I'll I'll ask a real specific question about it. The the tries and I hope. And yeah, I'm going to oh, try. Yeah. Or just yeah. that hesitancy <laughs> in the voice. You're like, yeah, yeah. You, you know, yeah. sometimes I'll say, "Are you going to try it? Or are you going to do it?" Or sometimes I'll say, "Like, it doesn't sound like you're that sure." 
mm-hmm. you know, but sometimes mm-hmm. just committing, that's the one I'm using. It goes the other way too, is like saying like, oh yeah, no, I- I'm definitely going to do that one thing. But I know when I use that tone in my own inner head voice, I'm definitely not going to do that one thing. <laughs> I have said it. I've said it out loud just to, just to, you know, just to get everybody off my back. No, I'm going to do that one thing. I'm not going to do that one thing. I might as well be saying, shaking my head no. Yeah, I'm totally going to do that one thing while shaking my head no. But, that, but it's so interesting because it wraps back to what Brittany said at the very yeah. beginning. What is the purpose of it then? Right. What is the purpose of you using this tool and, and reminding yourself of, why it's important in the first yeah. place, right? And and what makes it matter? That's, that's that reminder. Mm-hmm. That's that inner reminder. And that should be that trigger event that says, you know what, you need to review or I need to review what's on my list right now because I'm not committing to the the purpose, the promised purpose of this tool. It's not working for me if I'm able to make those like shaking my head, no commitments to myself, <laughs> right? It's, it's yeah. I'm, I'm not, yeah. it's okay. It's okay, but it, it's time for a dump, right? It's time for a big sort of core dump review. Or if you hear yourself using the should word. Yeah. I use yeah. it all the time. Well, yeah. and I'm not even thinking task management yeah. systems. I'm thinking about anything, yeah. like any app that you've downloaded, you know, about routines or chores or weight loss, health, <laughs> like all of these things. I have probably every single like health tracking app that you can think of. But it it, it is. It's it, yeah. Oh boy. Okay. So, now I I'm I, I'm a hot mess. <laughs> Oh, I'm just giggling because I had a whole thing on that uh, on my conference talk. <laughs> Did you? Well, we need to know more about that. <laughs> Pick well, what's your health goal and delete the rest. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, you exactly. know, I just exactly. I just went through that process because I had I had downloaded a whole bunch of apps and I'd gone into the like seven day trial of a whole bunch of apps and was about to pay for them and realized that you know what the stuff I really need is actually built in to the system. Mm-hmm. I don't need any of these apps. And and just yeah. that awakening of like, oh, how do I... Because this is something I definitely want to talk about, which is the idea of of like the perils of friction, right? Because there are oh. when there are too many apps, I that increases friction in my ability to actually get to the stuff that I really need and really want and can really help me keep moving forward. And so I want to reduce that friction that allows the technology to to be more seamless and, nay, invisible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Friction is a huge thing that I I talk about with technology. Yeah. Um, And you're right. Having too many apps, like I can't find what I'm looking for, um, you know, can be a huge problem. I I don't know the right notifications because I have notifications on for everything is another huge problem. Yeah. Um, And then when it just comes to like picking the right app for you, like it's okay. It's okay to admit it. We, we should be able to do something. Real people are suffering. I should be able to give ex, three extra taps in this app. Mm-hmm. You actually don't have to. And if you're noticing like, I hate that extra tap that I have to do. Yeah. Listen, listen to it. Because that's real feedback on that real thing you're trying to do. Um, Good point. Uh, yeah. how, do you, how do you handle it? Because you, you know, so much of this ties into... Uh, m- motivation, right? That's mm-hmm. that next piece. Like, how do you find the motivation, right? That spark of energy to keep you moving forward. And is there a a technological solution to that when you're feeling when you're feeling like you just don't have it? There are. There's not a technological solution that will magically give you motivation, but dang. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we can talk electrodes really if you want, you would say yes. but those centers yeah. of the brain are actually too low for them to reach well. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but what we can do is get rid of some of those other things that drain your motivation and drain your willpower. Those mm-hmm. getting excess alarms, that's going to drain it. Um, yeah. Having to look through too many screens of apps to find the right one, that's going to drain it too. Um, uh when you look at your phone and you see all the badges and all of these shoulds come to mind, you're too tired to even do the thing that you were about to start doing because you had to look at all the things and say no to all the things before you could get yeah. to the real thing. Yeah. Oh, that's um, such a great thing. Like looking at it the inverse, yeah. like d- there's nothing that's going to give you magical motivation, the magical motivation tour, but by God, you can look at the other side of it and figure out what's draining you every time you pick mm-hmm. up a device. 
Oh, I love and, that. Oh, yeah. That's really I good. have used technology to help me build better habits. Again, mm-hmm. giant nerd. Mm-hmm. But I use shortcuts for my morning routine. And that means, you know, those podcasts that I should be listening to, but aren't as fun as listening to the latest tech news. Mm-hmm. Um, I have those automatically play. I have a meditation app, a particular YouTube video pop up on my phone and it it's just there. And I didn't, I didn't have to go, I should meditate. Okay, now mm-hmm. go find thing, make decision. What meditation do I use? Do, 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 do. Oh, it's four o'clock or maybe five o'clock if I'm sleeping in. Um, it's, it's sometime early in the morning. I just start shortcut and shortcut mm-hmm. tells me the next thing to do. Okay, you're done with meditation. Okay, now it's time for push ups. Okay. It can't make me do the push ups, but it does at least get the meditation thing started, which meant I did it instead of okay. not doing it. <laughs> yeah. Right, so that's the environment. I have a question. For it. Uh-huh. Yeah. When you're saying shortcut, what does that mean? I don't understand. It is an app on an iPhone that integrates with the system and automates things. And in this case, it's automating Brittany. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Okay. Just an example, Nikki. I That's have a cool. I have a shortcut that sets my podcast environment right, and so when I hit a certain set of uh, a certain button, it sets all my lights to the right set of lights and turns on the red light that's outside my door office door, so that everybody in the house knows I'm in podcast mode. And please shut up. And uh, that <laughs> it just sometimes it works. Uh, I, you know, I'm, I'm clearly not the boss of them. But anyway, that's a very simple example. <laughs> uh, and it also sets my environment for the right apps that get launched and all those kinds of things, right? That's a, So it's an actual short, like it's called shortcuts? It's called shortcuts, yeah. Mm-hmm. And, 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 and most people do things like, you know, text my spouse, I'm on my way home when yeah. you're leaving the office. Um, you just start wow. to hit send. But I um, have one yeah. where I actually have using assistive touch. If I double tap the back of my phone, it will automatically send the last picture that I took in my camera roll to my wife without. So if I take a picture of the dog doing something stupid, two taps on the back of my phone and, and really just. Wow. Just, I wanted to I use that this so much and I cannot stop fidgeting with my phone. And it it's always so good, though. <laughs> Oh, it's so, I, I love, well, it does too. And I sometimes, like when I put the phone down and I hit corner to corner, it reacts as a double tap and mm-hmm. it will automatically send the last picture to her. And usually it's a Pokemon buddy picture. <laughs> like, you know, I made a video about that. I do. And I saw your shortcut and it's dope. <laughs> It is, so, anyway. Other than the conference video, it's my most watched video. I, I don't Pokemon doubt Go. it. <laughs> I do oh, not funny. doubt it. So anyway, I, this this is fodder for a workshop. Like we we should do a workshop on using shortcuts. It, it is um, it is Apple centric, right? This it the is. app is an Apple app. It's built into the phone, and so um, you know, I'm it's, given it's to understand. A, wow. There's a thing on Samsung that's a big speed knockoff i don't know how good it is i don't know yeah. anybody who's used it me neither never heard <laughs> so, of never heard it or it seen it in action or existed yeah. one of the two yeah um okay so the motivation trick i love mm-hmm. that think about it inverse mm-hmm. that's amazing how do you can you walk us through your planning process we just got off this big like what to avoid when planning your week planning your day we're doing a little series on it uh i would uh, love to hear how you plan briefly using your technology um if i feel i i listen to my brain and if i'm in a planning mode and it really wants to write then i'm going to have my ipad with um you know a note a notebook open and mm-hmm. I'm going to scribble that way because uh, papers are dangerous. And so I'm going to use my my iPad or maybe a whiteboard. Um, mm-hmm. I have a favorite mind map software. So sometimes that's the place that it needs to go. Um, so I'll put it there. I try not to put things first in my task management system because I'm in idea mode. And idea Brittany thinks a lot of things can happen that realistic Brittany does not think can happen or is like, oh, what's the action for that? What does it look like? Like, I don't have that brain on when I'm having the ideas. Mm-hmm. So a- as as painfully inefficient as it feels, I never put stuff directly like into OmniFocus. That's not mm-hmm. a thing that I do directly because mm-hmm. that's a really good way to have a very bloated OmniFocus. And that's mm-hmm. hard enough as it is to keep 
keep things uh, mm-hmm. under control with ADHD because right. we're so expansive. That's great. I love that you're listening to your brain, especially depending on probably what it is you're working yeah. on too, right? Yeah. I mean, that's going to spur if you want to do a mind map mm-hmm. or not. You guys really are kindred spirits. <laughs> just want to say... <laughs> When she's talking about the iPad and, you know, the the way that she's yeah. writing that, oh, that's P. Yeah. Yeah. Well, right. Brain I, mind mapping. Oh, yeah, that's it. I learned about mind mapping from P. Totally. Well, and how <laughs> valuable is it to be in, and this is one of the things I like so much about doing all this work on the iPad is that I can be in, like, in notability and I can be drawing or writing or doing whatever I need to do. And something out of that becomes actionable. And I just screenshot it and crop it and send it to Todoist. So it's there as mm-hmm. an attachment. And I always have that reference to what was I thinking when I said that thing when it's time to actually turn it into like action mode. I like um, that. It's pretty handy, right? Hmm. Uh, Interesting. Yeah. Screenshotting and circling and arrowing and then sending to my to-do app is, is, um, it's, it's one of my faves. Hmm. I like that. Let me steal it. Hmm. That's a big thing that I, you know, (sighs) It's a big thing for me, and I, I hope you have some thoughts on it, because this is uh, this moves us into information management, uh, and this is this is plagues a lot of us, I know, which is this idea of like, and, and you, as, l- let's say, a cognitive neuroscientist, somebody who has, you know, gone through the rigors of academe, uh, you have to have some systems built around information acquisition information retrieval, avoiding information rot. Walk us through your system. What do you do? Oh, you're going to be so disappointed. So all ah! of the software I used in grad school has been discontinued. Of course it has. For that. Yeah. And occasionally I'll have a thing where I will have particular citations for it. But in general, what I try to do is give my curiosity permission to read the science without the responsibility of capturing it. Oh, look at you. And that for me reduces the cognitive load in starting and and the data management. If I had someone who's going to manage all these things I read for me, that would be glorious. And as it stands, it just seems like I'm not in academia anymore. My my paycheck does not come if I write papers with great citations. Well, but what about just day-to-day information management, right? I mean, you know, we there was this time when it was just like we need information like junk lockers, and we just have to put it all in Evernote, and that has evolved. There are a lot of tools now that do the same thing. uh, So many new things I've never opened. (laughs) Like, (laughs) and and I hear people talk about them, you know, the obsidians and and the like, and and I know I'm gonna have to, and I haven't done it yet. Um, for things I'm working on with other people, it's going to sound super basic, but we use Apple Notes because I hate mm. typing in Google Docs. So yeah. we use mm. Apple Notes. Yeah. It does the thing where it capitalizes in the middle of your sentence. Yep. And I want to Terrible. scream. Terrible. And Can't unset that. Yeah. No, I have looked everywhere. Yeah. And <laughs> so... I and uh, I'm always doing that. Like I have ADHD. I finished a sentence. I read another one. I want to adjust it. Like this is normal typing in my world. Yep. Yep. <laughs> nope. We'll do it. I I think that is a great example though of like using the simplest tool to do the job that you need it to do. And in most cases, I think especially ADHD brain, we have a tendency to overlook the simplest solution, and mm. uh, th- often to our peril. Like eventually, I'll come back around to the simplest solution, and it'll be grand. Like a brave new world is opened up, all because I wasted six months looking at all these other things. Mm. Uh, but the simplest thing actually was already right in front of my face. I use uh, I'm uh, right now. Now, um, I'm in a relationship with, I, I should say, hashtag it's complicated, with mm-hmm. Devin Think, um, because I have a large library of PDFs, and Devin Think is exceptional at managing large libraries of PDFs. Mm-hmm. And when I need to go find something in a screenplay, for example, I can find it so fast faster than any other tool that I have used uh, because it's just, it's designed for that, for that research load. And when I've got 3,000 screenplays in this in this massive archive, uh, I really love it. It also does this thing where you can, where it has indexed folders. So for my daily notes, I might be working in IA Writer in a Dropbox 
folder. I might be writing in Obsidian in an indexed folder to that same Dropbox folder, or I might be writing in um, in DevonThink to an indexed folder. So when I make a change to a note in a plain old text editor, that shows up in all these apps that I I happen to be using. And uh, so that has, I think we're in so, sort of the halcyon so days of flexibility. We flirted, yeah. Devin Think and I have flirted. Yeah. Um, yeah. I have a license. It is on this computer. I don't know what this says. It never made it to the one that is brand new that just died on me a few minutes that's, before we that's started. That's telling. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but partly because that's not what I'm doing right now. I'm not yeah. actively in yeah. archival mode. And mm-hmm. as much as it might be tempting for me to do something like that, I remind myself that is not what your job is right now. Yes, right, right, <laughs> right. And that that gets back mm-hmm. to this main thing. Like part of my job is being able to, weird as it sounds, find things in screenplays very, very fast. Right? Like yeah. that is, that's part of it. And I needed a tool to answer that question. That it answers other questions for me is uh, is pretty powerful too. But to our point about using the tool, like what is the point purpose of using the tool? The add-on benefit or the knock-on benefits of Devon Think for me and Devon Agent in particular for doing deep research on the web is um, it it's really powerful after I've already verified that it does the one thing I needed it to do best. And right. everything else is a gift. And And to come back to that exact same point, like if I ask myself, what is your job, Brittany? What are yeah. the things that you are doing? What are your projects? None of them is information management. Yeah. Google's That's doing that for me. If I need to find that article, I bet I can. Yeah, yeah. right. You could find it again mm-hmm. really fast. I think that is a mm-hmm. isn't that an interesting um, sort of change in our uh, in our lives where we just don't have to maintain a search archive of things yeah. we've looked for anymore. We just don't have to do it. By and large, we can free ourselves from that experience. Yeah. You sent us three things that you wanted to talk about, and I think we've already covered them before I get to my last most important questions. Uh, you have productivity tips. Number one was less is more. Where do you go with less is more? Is that, have we nailed that? In terms of technology, we definitely talked about it. Like, watch what your notifications are. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh, most of them can be delivered quietly on Apple. But what that really means is go into the notification center and nowhere else. But mm-hmm. if you have too many in the notification center, you won't look at them anyway. So don't worry about it. You know, right? Um, mm-hmm. Really figuring out like what do I a- what actually needs to help me create this habit or help me um, do the important work that I need to do, and and what's getting in the way there, and just turn them off because you can do it right from notification center. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, not having a whole screen of badges because there's a lot of cognitive science around the color red and it says urgent emergency and you just shut down when you look at that all the time, but it still contributes a little bit to the uh, underlying anxiety, even if it doesn't really register consciously anymore. That you just said something really interesting. Point. Yeah, it's really interesting. And I'm, I, I then the video switches back to me, and I'm like wearing this red orange shirt, and I know, I'm like, right? I'm but feeling that has no meaning thing. for me. Stupidly aggressive. PM. Yeah, yeah. He's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not tell your sweatshirt doesn't tell me I need to do something. <laughs> Thank God, my <laughs> OmniFocus um, badge does. Yeah, right, right. The next is uh, automation. Now you've already mentioned shortcuts, and and you are automating Brittany. Uh, I would love to hear a little bit more about the things that you automate in your life. Okay, so there's all of my routines. They're all in shortcuts. Mm -hmm. Going to bed, getting up in the morning. In fact, I have a secondary device that does not have text messaging on it. It does not have my email accounts on it. It just has a bunch of shortcut launchers, right? Uh Uh-huh, but I can launch shortcuts, except it's throwing a fit right now and needs to have a battery replaced. But I have a nighttime (laughs) device that means I can run those shortcuts and not have my distracting device in the bedroom. Mm -hmm. Um, Wow, that's really smart. Yeah, I mean, if we have old devices lying around, they can be put to new use um, for being... That is so smart because I have a couple of clients right now who are struggling with the phone at (laughs) at night, you know, and having that be a major distraction. Yeah. So... That that could be a possible solution. Yeah. Is taking an old device and having the shortcuts on that, mm-hmm. right? Is that what you're doing? Yeah. And, and then got taking my... the other phone out. It also has audiobooks on it. So I can if I want to fall asleep to audiobooks, so, I don't need mm-hmm. my real phone. That's right. Wow. That's great. Yeah. We what else? Yeah, what else? Um, so everything around my client meetings, I I hate admin stuff 
more than your average ADD ear. Like I extra, extra hate it. Um, but I still need these cues in my life. And so I have a shortcut when somebody schedules a new appointment with me and it's going to create a little, a little, um, uh, here's a place where cognitive science is in. My main calendar is red. That's for appointments. Appointments are red. They're going to yeah. catch my attention the most um, because that's how our brains work, assuming you're not colorblind. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> so that, that's how that works. <laughs> so I have this not red little calendar, create 15 minutes before, prepare for client meeting, like wrap from client meeting mm-hmm. for a little window below that. And, in, you know, in the height of like pandemic insaneness, when I could not tell you what my appointments were the next day. And if I looked it up, five Mm -hmm. minutes later, I wouldn't be able to tell you. But I trusted my system. I trusted it. That Mm -hmm. it was going to tell me when it was time to go get ready for that next meeting. And it was going to tell me, okay, now you're going to log it. And because I'm an extra nerd, inside these little appointments, there's another shortcut link that will run the shortcut to prepare for the client meeting and do things like turn my phone to do not disturb and Mm -hmm. turn the right toggle timer on. Um, at the mm-hmm. end of the meeting, you know, it would help me do the things to log my hours for the extra certification if I feel like doing that someday. And, and so that's mm-hmm. all automated. That That is a thing I think that gives that, that gives people who know that automation exists and haven't really used it much another degree of that that fear. Like, how do you let yourself go to trust a, not just one thing on your phone that's at work or in the cloud that's at work, but a whole series of steps that that is at work. And I think which is getting why I over... never say like be like me. What I yeah say no is, totally. Let's find what works for you, and then if I you, think it might be helpful, yeah. or somebody directly asks. <laughs> Yeah, well, that's the, yes, right. that is totally the point I was getting at. Like, it goes back yeah. to the simplest thing. What is the one thing that you need to accomplish right now? And is there an automation to do it, right? Like, if it's just mm-hmm. set your lights to a certain thing and you happen to have few lights, maybe it's a one-step shortcut. Maybe it doesn't need to have a thousand steps to it to, to be but of value. That is where that motivation aid can come in. Um, a really good example I've used with a lot of people who were... The, tech savvy enough to be comfortable with the idea. Um, we hate asking for help. Like I know everybody hates asking for help, but we hate it extra. Yeah. And and so I've had clients mm-hmm. who had a posi- like people they could delegate to and they just weren't. And mm-hmm. and so we would write a shortcut together that was it would like let's make a calendar group out of the people and it would pop up with the people and it would already have the email. I'd like you to help me with and then you just fill it in. Because each yeah. word if we pay attention to it, each word I have to write in that email asking someone for help is painful. And if I can reduce those words and put it in like the form of a prompt instead, mm-hmm. that hurts less. Like that physical pain mm-hmm. you get for those tasks you really don't like, it hurts less. And so now all I have to do is launch mm-hmm. the shortcut. It's not always easy to launch the shortcut either, but it's just one step. I don't mm-hmm. have to use more willpower for each word of that email I need to send. That's huge. Yeah, I, I, it's so good. funny. I have exactly the same uh, thing. I've never even thought about brother. what the... Exactly. It's, yeah. it's that cognitive load <laughs> that comes from like the fear of actually having to just write a stupid, uncomfortable thing. I know. Even, even just triggering a shortcut to spawn an email with text pre-written that I just have to replace with the all cap stuff. As long as I can do it, like it, it's like my eyes. It's like all the words that I hate get kind of blurry this way Uh and I don't have to feel the stress of writing it like I do every other time, right? It's just, it's Mm -hmm. all blurry and I feel like, uh, what was her name in in Clue? There are flames coming out of my (laughs) my face and that's like, that's the feeling that I get and and so having a script that takes that cognitive load of not only A, it's faster, it just keeps me at peace. And there's that Really That's old huge. SKCD comic about yeah. like the time you spend automating stuff. And I'm like, no, 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 but you need that other element to this graph yeah. that shows like, how long did I procrastinate doing that thing? Yes, yes. Because that mm-hmm. needs to be part of that mm-hmm. time calculus. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, mm-hmm. La- uh, the, here's the thing. I need to know, we've, we're, we're, you know, the, the world is continuing to change around us. We've had a long year behind us. A what- few of them in the last year. It, right. Yes, yeah. that is absolutely yeah. right. What have you, as a two-part question, 
What have you given up in your tech stack that has surprised you the most? And what is the newest thing you are most excited about working into your productivity tech stack? <laughs> Begin. They're so unfair. Oh, they're awesome. Um, wow. Can I cheat and look at my phone? Of course. Of course. My newest thing I'm trying to work in is Trello. Trello. Mm -hmm. Because I run a group with a colleague and we need to share tasks. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yep. And so we're, we're testing out Trello. And so I'm working on automating that. And I'm frustrated with its current shortcuts availability. So my next yeah. thing is to like dive in and, and dig into that automation more. And what have I given up? Probably a lot because I made a choice when I had to wipe my phone to not reinstall all the same stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Not there right anymore. I feel like what I've given up in the last year really has more to do with acceptance, like giving up shoulds um, that I had, or or just giving up control of some things. Like I have been living and let calendar hard, just just going with mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I have an automatic mm -hmm. booking system, and you know, I do the stuff and yeah. I follow the automations, and and yeah. yeah, on a good day, just just giving up the control of like, I understand what the future means because we just didn't. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, and mm -hmm. learning to roll with those punches has been, has been a big deal. And it's like, it's okay. It's okay that I don't know what's happening in the future. I, this is my job today. Okay, what is it, calendar? Mm -hmm. Oh, you just alerted. It's time to go get ready for this appointment. Awesome. I can go do that thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's a, mm -hmm. there, there's been, I think that's a big adjustment, right? There's been a lot of, I think letting go of the fear of what comes next month because we hardly know what's going to come next week. Yeah. Uh, I, I just don't have time to feel existential stress about next quarter when I mm -hmm. just need to be find peace with tomorrow. And that's that's been a big change. I think, mm -hmm. yeah, I think I let go. And, and fires actually were a big part of it too. So we'd already yeah. been through the ringer and then in, in the Pacific Northwest, we had all the fires. Yeah. And there were things I'd done that just in hindsight were stupid things to do. Like, I, I don't know, I take these extra pictures in Pokemon just because I like sort of looking at my stats of stuff because mm -hmm. I also play Pokemon Go. And, um, and, and one day I was just like, why am I even doing this? Yeah. Why have, why yeah. have I been doing this? And I've written shortcuts to manage these stupid photos. And it just, something about emergency states, if we let it, let us focus on what really matters and, and just ditch the other stuff. Yeah. It's interesting you say that because there was a, a, a game um, that I was playing. And at first, it, you know, it had that bright shininess to it. And it seemed like it was really, oh, this is okay. It brings me joy. <laughs> and then it was like, all of a sudden, I realized how much time I was spending on this stupid game, how I was absolutely really not getting joy out of it. It almost felt like I had to go do it, you know, to, to stay up to date or whatever. And um, as soon as I stopped going to the game, mm -hmm. It it really did actually relieve a lot of pressure, which I didn't even know was there. It's and, yeah. and freed up a bunch of time. I, I had a and game. there's still games I play, but I had a game yeah. I removed from my device, and and I it was taking way too many cognitive cycles. Like I need mm -hmm. to be a one game person. Um, yeah, but uh, and it was after it was after a developer conference, and somebody did a chart on how your device manages memory. And it had to do with like how long things were on a screen. It would take mm -hmm. up more compute cycles. And I realized this game that I ostensibly didn't care at all about had, or how often you reopen it too. And I was like, ooh, oh, this is my computing device. Yeah. You, you, you weren't allowed to tell my OmniFocus to shut. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Or, or drafts to shut. Yeah. We just spent a lot of time in drafts too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's, yeah. I, I, I think, it, I don't think we can fairly have this conversation talking about games uh, without talking about social media and yeah. mm. right the apps that that mm. drive so much behavior. Um, do you, has your behavior around social media changed over the last year? I, th I, I think from reading and listening to your stuff, I know you you have a perspective. Uh, I mean, I've always sort of sucked at social media, but. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I mean, I, I gave up Facebook back in grad school when I, because 
that was another thing where it was felt very emergency mode and it made things feel a lot more black and white. Mm-hmm. And, and I put everything in the world into two categories. Things that get my work done, as in my thesis done, and mm-hmm. things that brought me joy. And I realized Facebook didn't fit into either of those. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, that's so interesting. And, and that, if my book club um, had a I depressing book, way. I was like, I love you guys. I'm not reading it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, know. I think, but, but I feel the same way about Facebook specifically. Mm-hmm. And I never got onto Instagram really anyway. So that was never a, a, an issue. But um, it, it, I remember when Facebook first came out, I don't think there was ever, or when I got onto it, there was ever a day where I didn't see every single thing that was in my thread, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Like I always knew what was going on. And then in the last two years, it's just gotten further and further mm-hmm. and further and further away. And uh, and then this is the crazy thing, you tech people. So because I may have been looking at some health apps, now if I ever do go on Facebook, it's all about these exercise ads and everything because they've targeted me. We were Today's a big day for you. <laughs> In iOS 14.5, they've introduced app tracking transparency. Um, sure I don't know how well it'll actually work, but... <laughs> Yeah. 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 Tracking is a well, big Well, now I really don't want to go yeah. because all it's doing is telling me to exercise. So yeah. Like, now it's just I don't, like, yeah. Yeah. Well, talk no. about reducing <laughs> cognitive load, right? Just that, that for me has been a huge transformation and not really over the, over the pandemic, but, but before that, I, I have dramatically reduced my, my person. I, I, eliminated my personal use of Facebook. Like I have an account Mm. and uh, I just like, I I just don't, don't use it. I, and I'm one of those people. And I'm, I say this with a little bit of like self-loathing that use it for business, but Mm -hmm. it, it doesn't really demonstrate great attachment for us as podcasters. Like we don't get (laughs) a lot of people who come from Instagram or Facebook because they don't want you to leave Instagram and Facebook. Don't want you to leave Instagram and Facebook. So when you post, you know, a podcast to go listen to, nobody goes and clicks on that. They all find us from other ways. And so that is, uh, that was, was really powerful is, is recognizing that those services were doing a disservice for me. What I have really fallen in love with over the, over the year is bespoke networks. And in, in my case it's it's really discord like i mm. love discord because the the groups that i'm a part of in discord i know exactly what their function is right yeah. it, they're smaller they they focus on one aspect of my life and i connect with people who have shared interests with me and they're beautiful shining roses of people and i love them and i also don't feel that level of just sort of emergency all the time uh, mm-hmm. that that was going on with Facebook. And so um, that's been, that's been, I think my net with a pandemic has made my networks smaller and more powerful to in my life, which is, which yeah. has been great. And I'm a big believer in discord too. And, and when it comes to Twitter, I have a Twitter. I obviously don't tweet very much. Like you can yeah. see, it's not very much. <laughs> I mostly tweet during <laughs> Apple events. I tweet during <laughs> Apple events. <laughs> <laughs> um, but what I what I've done is that's the place when I go there, that's the place I want to go for nerdy stuff. Yeah. And and so yeah. I, talk about I bespoke use, networks, like it's smaller. I use it's... Twitterific. Um yep. and I have a ton of mute and and other filters. And and I may like somebody a lot. And if they just tweet too much, and it doesn't matter if I like the stuff they tweet, it's just too much. So easy. Yeah. Like yeah. they're probably gonna get a muffle. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's just because, mm-hmm. like, I actually can get through my Twitter feed in a day yeah. if I wanted to. I usually don't because I ignore it for weeks. Yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but it's not a, like first thing in the morning I need to get through yeah. all that and, stuff. Yeah. And yeah. I don't, it's not yeah. my place for news. It's not my place for politics. So I have mm-hmm. all political phrases, like, just muted Blocked. out. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, that means equally Republican. It means equally Democratic, like, mm-hmm. and all of the yeah. variants on those words. <laughs> And I may miss something Mm -hmm. useful and I don't care. It's fine. Mm. I I really have created a place that's more, uh, not that I'm trying to get one perspective, but I'm trying to get those perspectives and what they're saying about technology specifically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, What do you think, Nikki? Did you survive? 
this conversation? I did. did. Actually, I followed you guys a lot more than I thought I was going to. So this was great. Yeah, you did great. (laughs) Uh, uh, Brittany, I hope this isn't the last time we talk to you. Oh, this is great. Oh, can't can, can we make sure that's not the last time? <laughs> uh, we've got new projects coming up, and I can tell you're going to be involved. It's going to be <laughs> great. Uh, this is wonderful. You got to plug a little bit. Where do you want people to go to find more about you? Obviously, your Twitter and Facebook pages are going to be uh, really important. Um, yeah, there's not a Facebook page. Or maybe there is, and like I never took it down because I tried oh, it once. Yeah. If yeah. there is, it's going to look really abysmal and super <laughs> embarrassing. I just, I can't even tell you if I took it down. Maybe someone will tell you. Um, my yeah. website's conquer.consulting. <laughs> and I post some of the stuff I do there. Um, my nerdy mm-hmm. Twitter is the ADD Liberator. But my my actual like new stuff I'm doing in ADHD and, and business is... Uh, devise underscore conquer conquer und- yeah devise underscore conquer I can do words today <laughs> you're doing great you're doing great uh, uh, Brittany Smith thank you so much for hanging out with us it's been a great conversation uh, it's been too yeah. long in coming we have clearly more to nerd out about uh, and thank you everybody else for downloading and listening to this show we appreciate you and your time and your attention don't forget if you have something to contribute to this conversation we're heading over to the show talk channel in our very own discord server and you can join us right there by becoming a supporting member at the Deluxe level. On behalf of Nikki Kinzer and Brittany Smith, I'm Pete Wright. We'll catch you next week right here on Taking Control, the ADHD podcast. 